I'm from DAFO. Donc DAFO is an NGO uh, based in Washington, um, developed by uh, medical professionals, doctors, um, nurses, who um, their aim is to stop organ harvesting, organ harvesting, organ trafficking throughout the world. But obviously, as we've seen in the video, China is the biggest abuser of human transplants in the world, organ trafficking, um, organ harvesting. So all our efforts are put into stopping this um, organ harvesting in China. But that doesn't mean that it doesn't exist elsewhere. It does. But there are fundamental differences um, that I will explain that are very important. This is just a short explanation on DAFO. Um, this is what, how we work. We do presentations. We work with independent researchers like Ethan, uh, Matus, Kilgore, uh, the WOIPFG, which is another independent research center, um, doctors throughout the world um, who support us, MPs in work with governments um, to bring them the information the information, uh, medical information, about what is actually happening. Because doctors were the first to be in confronted with this problem uh, throughout the world. You've already seen uh, Professor Levy uh, tell his story about his patient who went for an organ transplant 15 days after he'd met him. And um, Professor Levy also uh, was uh, very powerful in changing the law in, in Israel. And this is something that I would like to transmit to all the medical professionals that may be here, is that there has always been medical professionals uh, as the driving force for the change in law. Um, Dr. Ghazali, um, also a member of our advisory board, is a, a Malaysian doctor who, as you can see below, um, there's a registry in Malaysia, a registry that just clearly indicates where people get their transplants from. India used to be um, an important um, country for uh, transplants, illegal transplants, um, up until 2004, I think it was, um, and then changed. The laws changed in India so that it wasn't as easy to do, to have transplants. So the people, so brokers changed to China. And we can see that over the years, there's a big increase exactly in the period that corresponds to um, the peak that we talked about or that was talked about in the film. The, um, again, as I said, doctors are, are very present um, in, this, uh, in this research. And because we're there, doctors have to receive patients, patients who've been abroad. Sometimes the, in the organ transplant doesn't work. So somebody has to fix the problem. But you also have to find out, find out where the organ comes from, what happened, what were the conditions. And sometimes these transplants have occurred in very bad conditions, very rapidly, especially during the um, Olympic Games because um, the Chinese government wanted to keep a very low profile um, because the whole world was watching them. So patients would be in and out very quickly. Sometimes they still had catheters and um, um, tubes coming out while when they took the plane. So the, sometimes you can have c patients come back in very critical situations. For the medical world, as you can see in this document, it, it's, it's, uh, it's been analyzed. It's nothing new. We know people go abroad for transplants. And we they even compare the effect. Is it better to go be transplanted in another country than in your own country? These things have been looked into. Also, uh, for the, as I mentioned in the video, there's the Italian law that's recently uh, appeared. Um, and doctor, um, the Senator Romani is also a doctor. So there's a particular sensitivity for doctors on this subject, because obviously we can't understand why other doctors permit themselves to kill and save the lives of somebody else especially just for money. It, it's just not coherent with why doctors exist. 
Um, this is what the um, the uh, resolution, American resolution, says about regarding persistent, credible reports of systematic state-sanctioned organ harvesting from non-consenting prisoners of conscience. This is a fundamental difference because you will hear about it and read in newspapers about clandestine operations, black market operations in China, around the world. It's fake. This is fake news. What happens in China is very specific. It is organized by the government. You've seen that information in the video. We'll see more information about this. And the recent report from Ethan Matus and Kilgore shows this more. This difference must be very clear in your minds because there are a lot of articles on the internet that add confusion. So some doctors, for example, say, oh, well, let's give them a chance. You know, they've got to improve their system. But uh, the TTS, the Transplant Society, the World Health Organization, the WMA, have been trying to help China um, stop using uh, prisoners as the main source of organs for all their transplants, whether it be for international patients or their own patients. For years, they've been doing this. What exactly is going on in China? What we've always known in the first sentence is that prisoners were always known. Since 90, as said in the film, since the 1970s, there have been um, prisoners are killed for their organs. Yeah? Normally it used to be a bullet in the head and the, the body would be rapidly taken to an ambulance and the surgeons, as Dr. Um, and Vototi said the organs would be rapidly taken out while the ambulance would go to the hospital. That's one way. But things changed, things evolved. Um, we've heard about lethal injections uh, that were also used. But also, coming back to Professor Levy with his patient who's a cardiac patient, we see that the prisoner was killed on a certain day to correspond when the patient arrives. This was a new phenomenon, yeah? Because normally Chinese law says that once a prisoner is condemned to death, that he has to be killed within seven days. So if they're not killed within the seven days, that means they've been delayed. Why? Because there's somebody coming over. These things, again, are not talked about by the government, the Chinese government, um, nor you, will you read about this in the press, more now, but before, completely unknown. And these dif differences are fundamental. The other difference, big difference, and the, um, the video and um, Ethan's work on this confirms this, is that there's another source of organs which are prisoners of conscience. They are not condemned to death. They are not condemned of any criminal, um, uh, what's the word, any crime. No, no, capital. <laughs> yeah, no capital crime that would need them to be killed. Um, again, this just is to show that uh, it's known throughout the world that people are going to, to, um, to China, not only because us doctors see this actually happening, but patients reveal this information. Um, they talk about it. They talk about it on forums. Um, and we've even noticed that um, uh, patients advise each other to, well, why don't you try China? It's cheaper. It's quicker. You see, these things are, are developing naturally, organically, if you want, but not in the right way. People are taking control of their own lives. They just send the money to the hospital. They go. They have their uh, transplant, and they come home. No intermediates. No other doctors. This is very worrying because... How do you control these people? You can't imprison um, an intermediate if they're in one. So that's why the, um, when you read information, uh, make sure that um, it's clear in your mind who's writing it, who's com where it's coming from. Um, also, there's a great responsibility um, from our side is that by not saying anything, so a lot of countries don't talk about organ harvesting in China. They sometimes they don't want even want to talk about organ trafficking in other countries because they're worried that it will reduce the number of organ donations in their own country. It's worrying because um, we, we 
patients um, are exposing themselves to danger. Sometimes, as I said, the operations go badly, so they can die. Sometimes they are the patients are desperate. They go to China for a transplant because they're promised a brand new life. Yeah, if they pay thirty thousand or one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, but their their illness is too far advanced. No matter what happens, they'll die anyway. So they're losing money uselessly. Again, there are lots of abuses that are going on. Um, Arnie Schwartz, another researcher, independent researcher, has shown how uh, medical laboratories are always also putting themselves in difficult situations because they're using organs for their research that are not ethically obtained. So normally all their research should be thrown away. It's not ethical research, so it cannot be used. And there was over 2,000, I think, uh, transplantations that were done with, with by different laboratories um, using these illegally obtained organs or transplantations. Just a, a side point very quickly. Huang Jiefu, which is one of the, um, the, the, um, the major people and um, maestros in the, um, the, this organ donation system in China and the um, organ transplantation, back in 2014, I don't know if any of you remember this, but there was a European resolution in December 2013. The immediate reaction from the Chinese government was no, nothing at all. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, Hong Jiethu announced that the Chinese government had decided to continue using organs from prisoners. So this was a, a very big uh, challenge to the, the international world because, as I said before, they'd been helping, trying to help China to lose this habit, change the habit, change their way of functioning. And suddenly they said no. So what happened was that lots of um, the, the medical world decided to boycott Chinese uh, conferences. And that had an immediate reaction, as well as the information published by independent researchers, researchers um, on what we now know as the plan to, to stop the organ transplant from um, prisoners since the 1st of January 2015. Yeah, it was our direct pressure that changed these things. So even if a lot of people say, oh, China's far away, the government will never be able to change, every time we publish something, every time something is said, every time a government does a res resolution, it has an effect, very strong effect. One question that comes up is how does all this, how does all this start? How did it? Um, how is it possible? Basically, very quickly in two lines, Jiang Zemin, the Prime Minister, sorry, General Secretary, back in 1999, decided to um, to persecute completely the Falun Gong practitioners. And as you saw in the video, they are. Um, the main uh, population in prisons because they didn't give their names, because um, they'd been demonized, uh, dehumanized over the years of the persecution. Um, and what I find particularly interesting is when he says, destroy them physically. Yeah, Nobody could imagine what they were talking about at that time, about destroying them physically. Everybody thinks of torture, but nobody was thinking of cutting people up and selling their organs, making money out of them. And these are people who have also been tortured. I mean, it's just unimaginable. Um, why have doctors been able to participate in this? One, because of the persecution of not, not only the Falun Gong, but also Tibetans, Uyghurs. Um, we know that the Chinese consider them as lesser humans. Um, also, the Chinese, although the government, Chinese government's way of uh, governing makes it very clear that if you don't agree with their way of thinking, then you will soon feel the retribution. Um, and the same thing for the doctors. They, ha they follow orders. They're part of medical, um, big medical structures, sometimes med military hospitals. They follow orders. And if they don't follow orders, they may be killed, imprisoned, and there may be later consequences for their family. This fear that the government has generated um, works not only in the general population, but also with the doctors. 
Um, again, this is to come back to two minutes, okay. The state-sanctioned part, yes, everything is controlled in China by the government. Um, they know everything. So there's nothing um, uh, clandestine about these interventions. Right? There's also a law that exists in China, and it's the only one that's really applied, um, which allows organ harvesting, yes, for the military and the police people, and it's been in place since 1984. Um, and it allows them to use the bodies with or without the um, consentment. And the interesting thing is they, they knew they were doing something wrong because, as you can see, it says it must be kept secret. And the medical people are not allowed to wear medical uniforms. The ambulances that we talked about were not marked with a big red cross. Uh, everything was very secret. Obviously, this situation is not, um, organ harvesting from prisoners is not accepted throughout the world because there's nothing, um, we, we cannot ensure free consent by prisoners in prison, especially uh, Chinese prisons. Um, I, what I wanted to say was these declarations, these ethical codes that, co that um, control and um, manage the medical world, the medical research, have all been put into place because there were abuses. Yeah? The Nuremberg Code, the Declaration of Helsinki, was all in relation to what happened um, during the Second World War, the research on, uh, on uh, Jewish prisoners. And the Declaration of Istanbul, which is in 2008, was the medical reaction to this organ trafficking. In other words, the medical profession said that they cannot control change China directly, but they can put pressure on the government, on the Chinese surgeons, um, by not publishing articles from uh, Chinese research. And we, we can see now, over the years since 2008, that most newspaper, medical journals do not publish uh, Chinese uh, articles. And just one thing interesting, on the second line, this line says, a study uses transplant cases from 2011 and states use DBD. DBD is donation by brain death. In China, death is determined when the, the heart stops beating not when the brain stops functioning. So that here they do research on something that's already illegal in China. And they're trying to publish it in our own newspapers to validate it. So obviously, it's very important that the medical world um, refuses to, to publish this information. Very quickly, there are no, all the laws that you may hear about in China, the announcements that have been made, um, are all not respected. And especially the one which is the 2007 law, which normally stops international patients from going to China for transplant. Well then, this is the son and the wife of the Sultan of Singapore who had a transplant <coughs> in September 2015. Yeah, so, eight years after this law. Uh, and they, were, they thanked the Chinese government for this uh, intervention. It just shows that it's still going on. This isn't something from the past. Um, and interestingly, uh, the, the hospital where this uh, operation was done was Sun Yat-sen University, which is also the university and the hospital where Huang Jiefu works, which, who is um, supposedly the mastermind of um, the new donation organ system. This is going to be my last slide just to show something that's absolutely incredible, how organ transplanting doubled and even tripled in only a few years um, in China. The peak you can see is corresponds to 2004-2005 period. Um, and even if you just look at the, the, um, the part that's here, it's still doubling the number of transplantations. And that's never been seen of in, in, in the world, um, how they managed to, to um, increase the number of transplants in such a short time is just astounding. Yeah? And at that period of time, they did not have a donation system at all. So where were these organs coming from? And this big peak that we see here is this sudden increase of organs 
for us, after all these years of research, this is the prisons of conscience that have been taken into account um, and have been used. What's interesting, and again, is this part here where the curve slows down and becomes quite horizontal for the next couple of years, again shows that, sadly, the information that we get is, is also altered by the Chinese government. Right. Thank you very much.